Hi, second graders. This is Ms. Debussy coming to you live from my classroom to work on our next lesson together. This lesson is from Unit 1. It's lesson number four, and it's called Unknown Add-ins and Subtraction. Now, this is a little different from our normal video. You'll be able to see me in this entire video because for the strategy I'm going to share with you today, you are going to need to watch me and see me using my hands and using my fingers to help me with this strategy. So let's go ahead and get started and see how we can use this strategy to help us with our addition and our subtraction. Let's go ahead and get started with our first equation today. Now, the equation is here on the board behind me. Nine plus something is equal to 12. Now, from what I know about addition, if I were to put these numbers on a math mountain, the two numbers that I am adding together are the add-ends. I know nine, but I also have this mystery number in the box. I don't know what it is yet. And they add up to give me my total or my sum of 12. So I'm looking for this mystery number. Now, there are two ways that I can do this, and I'm going to show you those two ways using my hands and my fingers. The first way is I can do what's called counting on. When I count on, I'm going to count up. That means I'm going to start with my smaller number, nine is smaller than 12, and I'm going to grab the small number, just like this, nine. Then I'm going to keep counting and put up one finger for each number and stop when I get to 12. Watch how I do that, ready? Nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh, I need to stop. How many numbers did I go up second grade? One, two, three. So nine plus three is equal to 12. I grab the starting number and I count up until I get to my ending number. Now that's called counting on. I can also count back. Now, counting back can be a little bit trickier, especially if we're not comfortable with counting backwards. But when I count back, I can start at the bigger number and count down until I get to the smaller number, just like this. Let's grab the big number this time. 12, 11, 10, 9. Oh, guess what? I still got the same answer. It's still three. So if I like to count up, that's a great strategy. If I like to count down, that's a great strategy. They both should get you the same answer. When you have a missing add end, you can either count up or count back. Go ahead and practice with our second example. Now, in this example, I still have a missing add end, but it's now at the beginning of my equation. The good news is, is I still do the strategy the exact same way. I can either grab the small number and count up or grab the big number and count down. Let's practice both ways. Let's start by counting on. When I count on, we're going to grab the small number. So the small number here is four. Let's grab four and stop counting when we get to 11. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, let's see, I have five, six, seven fingers up. That means that seven plus four is equal to 11. Now, let's also, just for practice, and so that we can remember how to do it, let's practice counting down. 
Remember, when we count down, our numbers are getting smaller. So we need to grab the big number first. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. I stopped when I got seven fingers because I stopped at the number four. So seven plus four equals 11. No matter which way we did it, we got the same exact answer. Strategy, but this time our equation is a subtraction equation. So in subtraction, if you remember from our other lessons, our king is at the top, the very first number. So I know that I cannot get any numbers bigger than 12 to fit into that mystery box. So let's first practice by counting on or counting up. When I count up, I need to grab the small number and stop at the big number. So let's grab four. Ready? Try this with me. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now let's see. I got five, six, seven, eight. I went up eight numbers. Now we're going to double check just to make sure. Let's count down starting from the big number and see if we still get eight. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Did I still get 8? Yes, I did. 5, 6, 7, 8. It works whether we're adding or subtracting and we're missing one of our add-ends. One last example together. The last example is 15 minus 9 equals something. So in this problem, our missing add end is all the way at the end. Now let's think about what we know about subtraction. In subtraction, we know that the first number is the king of the math mountain. And there are no numbers in the equation that can be bigger than the king. So let's practice counting on and counting back. When I count on, I start with the small number, stop at the big number. Here we go. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's see. 5, 6. Let's double check. Let's start at 15 and go down to 9. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Did we still get 6? Yes. So no matter which strategy we prefer, if you're more comfortable adding, you can count on. If you're more comfortable subtracting, you can count back. But either way, you should get the same answer. This is a really good strategy to use where you just need to grab one of the numbers and either count up to the bigger number or grab our number and count down to the smaller number.